Hello everybody and welcome back to Minecraft. So on the last one, we beat Minecraft. Yay! Though all joking aside, there's still plenty more stuff to do and check out. So, and uh, this one, I'm going to think about moving house. So let's get to that. Alright, so I've done a little bit since the last one. Uh, not a huge amount. Um, first things first, stuff in the farm. As you can see, all this stuff's not getting harvested at the moment because I've cut off the power to it. I just had too much stuff coming in from here to be able to store it all without making uh, void barrels for everything. I didn't really want to quite do that. I've made a few, but all the same. Uh, we've got some new crops as well. Can't remember exactly what we had before, but some new stuff. We've got experience crops, we've got ender crops, we've got slime crops for um, slime balls, uh, diamond crops, because, yeah, infinite diamonds, why not? Uh, we've got some element crops. We've got earth, air, fire, and water, which can do some cool stuff. Uh, emerald crops, uh, nether crops for the netherrack, and more importantly, the nether quartz. Uh, wither skeleton crops for the skulls. Uh, gas crops for the gas tiers. Uh, platinum crops, because platinum's kind of rare, and, you know, I just figured it would be nice to have an infinite amount of it, because we're extravagant like that. And uh, we've also got uranium crops, which can let fuel our uh, big nuclear generators. And also, they poison you because radiation. But, yeah, uh, we could have actually used uh, eulorium crops instead which probably doesn't the same thing, but, you know, uranium works, and I just wanted to grow freaking uranium, because freaking uranium. I'm going to stop saying uranium now. Uranium. Anyway, um, other stuff I have been working on. Um, I finally got rid of our atomic disassembler and made this power fist instead. This thing is incredibly cool. Uh, essentially, what it... It works, you know, similarly to the Atomic Disassembler, uh, but it's, you know, part of the Power Suits mod, so you can add a ton of cool things to it. And there's a lot of modules you can use. Uh, first of which is all these things, the Lux Capacitors that I've strewn about everywhere. I was trying to figure out a good way to use them instead of torches, but I'm still not really happy with how this looks. But, whatever. Uh, essentially, I just literally plop down a light source, which is a Lux Capacitor, and it only uses a little bit of energy. That's it, that's all it uses, which is pretty cool. Um, the other stuff I've got on this thing, some of the stuff I will take off, so I'm sort of tinkering around with it, and some of the stuff I really don't need on here, but I've just kind of got it. Uh, so we've got a hoe on here, which after you upgrade it lets you hoe a huge area. Jesus, that really is a huge area. Cool. Uh, I've also got shears, so we can shear things like, you know, grass and plants and whatnot. Uh, this thing's kind of fun. This is a, uh, a lightning generator. It will just summon down a lightning bolt wherever you kind of point this thing at, which is um, not quite as cool as it sounds. Uh, let's see if I can find a mob to test this thing on. Ah, oh, there we go. And call down a lightning strike on you. Yeah. Like I said, it's not actually as cool as it sounds, because while it is, you know, friggin' lightning, it really doesn't do much damage, it just kind of sets them on fire. And, well, it didn't even kill the horse, jeez. And it uses up an insane amount of power. It uses up like 500,000 RF per time you use it. That's kind of mental. So I'm probably not going to be using that too much. Uh, I've also got a flint and steel, because yay fire. Uh, leaf blower, that's pretty cool. Unless you blow out leaves. Nyom, blow out the leaves. I think you have to use it on a block so it'll work properly. Oh, it cleared out all these, Jesus. Yeah, it basically lets you clear out a huge area of uh, something that just breaks, like leaves or grass or whatever. And it does in a pretty huge area once you upgrade it. Like an insanely huge area. Which is pretty cool if you want to clear out a big load of grass and stuff. It's a little bit laggy because it's trying to do so much at once, but, you know, whatever. Uh, what next? We've got a crafting table in this thing, so we just right-click with it, and we've got a crafting table. Boom. Awesome. Uh, I've also got a saw launcher. Again, I'll probably take this thing off because I don't really find much use for it. That lets you shear things. Yay. And it also lets you kill things. But, again, it's really not that powerful. You can kind of spam it, but, eh, it's not that great. And also, if you're flying, it just kind of tends to shoot straight down like that. I think guessing that's a bug, but eh, whatever. Not particularly good. Uh, this is the weapon I probably will be using on this thing, which is the railgun. This thing's really cool. You just kind of shoot it, you can spam it, but it makes you sure overheat, which is something to be wary of, I suppose. But it does a ton of damage, and yum, it also knocks you back, which is kind of fun. It just shoots you backwards. You can even fly with this thing just by like shooting the ground. It's awesome. I like it. It's cool. Uh, oh, the weapon that I decided against was this plasma cannon. Just lets you shoot out balls of plasma, which explode. And then you can charge it up for a big ball of plasma. Boom. Which also explodes. It explodes bigger. It explodes blocks. It's fun, but eh, the explosion sound is really annoying when using it for fighting. And it doesn't actually do that much damage if you spam it, so... 
probably going to ditch that one. Uh, I've also got this wrench, which is kind of a big multi-wrench. It should, in theory, do just about everything that all the different wrenches we've made um, do normally. In theory. Oop, sorry, server. I was uh, going through chunks too fast for you there. Uh, so in theory that should replace all of our wrenches. In practice it doesn't always, but it should, you know, use, do a decent amount. I think it does most of the stuff the Crescent Hammer does, so that's cool. So yeah, I've just sort of been upgrading that and I'll probably uh, dip some more stuff off this so I'm not scro scrolling through uh, 90 million things at once when I'm using this thing, but it's fun. Anyway, moving on. Oh, I also forgot to mention the, uh, the power on this thing. Uh, that was one of the main reasons I got the Power Fist, apart from all the cool stuff it does. Uh, it was also because I felt really cheaty using the uh, Atomic Disassembler, which basically gave our armor infinite power. Uh, so now that I've got this thing on, it won't anymore. And also, none of my armor has power on it anymore. Instead, I'm using this thing, this big Ultimate Energy Cube, and just keeping that in my inventory, it'll drain the power from that instead, which is kind of fun. So I don't have to worry about putting batteries on and the weight, and I can still run insanely fast, which is cool. Alright, but moving on... We're going to go into Mistcraft, which I've done a bit of here because uh, I already tried recording this once and then realized I wasn't recording because I'm awesome like that. <laughs> so there's a few things you're going to need to get started with Mistcraft. Uh, the first thing you're going to need is paper, which we have a decent amount of. I'm probably going to need to make a sugarcane farm at some point to keep up with all this paper use, but hey ho, what can you do? Uh, we're also going to be needing leather. Some of that. Thank you. And then we need... Uh, what else? For ink. That's what we need. Uh, a bunch of ink, whoops, which we then combine with a bottle of water. Let's go and grab a, a couple of bottles and fill these up with water. Hello, fountain. Fill you up with water. Awesome. And then we can combine those two to make an ink vial. Ding, ding. Oops. Come on. It's being laggy. I'm not sure why. Uh, so, yeah, two ink sacks and a water bottle. Mix an ink vial. Cool. And we're going to be needing quite a lot of those. So then there's these things that you need, which I'll quickly look up for you so I can show you the recipes if you want to know them. Uh, Mistcraft. They're really not that hard to make. You're going to be needing a book binder, that one, which is iron and wood, uh, an ink mixer, which is stone, wood, and a glass bottle, and a writing desk, which is wood, a feather, and a glass bottle. Cool. Uh, so the first thing you're going to want to do is with the ink mixer. This is pretty much what you actually, I suppose, the first thing actually, that is the first thing you want to use the ink mixer. So you fill this thing up with ink vials and paper, and that makes you a link panel, which is something that you're going to be getting very used to making because you need to use it for every single book that you make. Uh, so grab a couple of them out, and then what you're going to do is use one of those to make an unlinked linking book. And this will basically let you get back from the world you visit. Without this, there is not a very easy way to get back. There is some ways to get back, but it's not easy. And it's not something you want to do. So always make sure you have a linking book with you, no matter where you go. And also have backups, in case you lose this one, or you die, or whatever. So personally, I've got one stuck in my uh, ender pouch here. Oh, I've got some pages that I forgot about. Cool. Just stick them in this uh, filing cabinet. I just made a filing cabinet because it uh, actually store loads of stuff. Because, yay. I didn't want to clock up my um, A system with all the pages. Um, so yeah, I have a, an extra linking book in my ender pouch, should I need one. Now actually, I'm just going to make an extra one as well. Uh, for something that's a good practice to do. Uh, make another linking book. And link this back here again. This also spawns you back exactly where you're standing and exactly which way you're facing. Which is kind of fun. Uh, okay, cool. That'll do. And the next thing we're going to make is a uh, descriptive book. So we can do this just by having some leather in this thing, the book binder, and then you put a linking panel in, and that makes you a descriptive book. And this is an entirely new dimension. Awesome. And then I'm going to grab our book stands here, which is, again, easy to make. I think it's just wooden sticks. Yep, wood and sticks. Plunk that down on there. That'll do. And that's just going to stop the book from falling on the floor when you uh, visit your new dimension. You can just use this in place once you click on that big black square. But then it will fall on the floor and these books can get damaged and destroyed. And if you just accidentally destroy the book, then there's no way to get back to it unless you've made another, uh, another one of these linking books and used it in that dimension. So want to take care of these books, put them on a book stand, stop it falling on the floor, 
it's all good. Okay, so that's the very basics of Miscraft. You make uh, descriptive books, and then you go and try and find more pages so you can create your own ages. And one of those ages is where I am going to be setting up my new home, because I'm kind of sick of this place, and I'm sick of trying to cram things in here. So yeah, we're going to make our whole new home in one of these ages when I make one that I like. But for now, let's check out this new age I just made. Ah no, we're falling in the void. Ah. Whoa. And now we're not. Oh god, this is not good. Not good, not good, not good, not good. Uh okay. Quick explanation. Sometimes ages are unstable. Uh this one is very unstable because there's explosions and that's also white decay, which will eat the entire world and everything in it. So I am out of here. No, thank you. Okay then, uh, I was hoping to uh, break in uh, instability a little bit smoother than that. Yeah! Okay then. Um, so instability is what happens when you get conflicting symbols uh, in books. Because these are all created by different symbols, different descriptions, modifiers, etc. Which is something we'll get into with the writing desk when we start making our own ages. But essentially when I just made that one with just a linking panel and didn't put any descriptors on it, it chooses them all randomly. So in that one apparently it randomly chose things that conflicted and that created instability. So that ranges from things like uh, you can get debuffs like mind fatigue, things like that, um, to darkness, to nausea, and as we saw in that one it had random explosions, you can also get meteors, and it also had white decay which was one of those uh, white floating blocks in the air. And they will literally travel through the air and destroy everything. When white decay spreads onto a block, it destroys it, turns into white decay and spreads onto the next one. So that age is pretty much just dead. We never want to go back to that, that age again because the whole thing is just going to die. So yeah, instability sucks. You don't want something with instability. So I'm just going to get rid of this book. And as I said, when you uh, chuck a book on the floor, it just kind of sits there. You can't pick it up, it just pushes it around. And if you destroy them, then you can never go back to that age again. And things like water really destroy linking books. So you really want to put these on books then if you want to keep them. But that's the end of that age. I never want to go there again because it was scary. Awesome. Well, let's make another one, shall we? Let's grab another link panel. And shove that in there. Grab another descriptive book. And I'm going to grab another link panel and make myself another linking book just to be safe. And ding. Oops, that was the wrong thing. Link panel. There we go. Ding, sweet. Uh, make that one as well. Cool. Uh, so the reason I'm actually making two linking books is one that I'm just going to have on me when I go exploring places, and one I'm going to leave right next to the uh, the book in. So that if I die and I respawn, then I'll respawn where the uh, this des the descriptive book originally put me. So then I'll have a linking book straight back to the overworld should I need one, just as a sort of death prevention precaution. Alright, so let's check out this next descriptive book and see what this has in store for us. Hopefully it'll be a little bit nicer. Ooh, and we're in. Oh, this one looks much nicer. It's all grassy, there's cows, there's trees. Ooh, looks like we're in a small biomes world, so this has got incredibly small biomes. That's fun. And ooh, what is our water? What is our water? This looks fun. Uh, yes, I have buckets. I like going around with buckets because... Uh, Anything that's registered as a liquid can be spawned in as the usual water for the world. So every th this is basically like a normal world generation, so there's lakes and oceans and stuff that are spawned, but instead of using water, it's use whatever this is. And this is Molten Sanguinite. Cool. Well, I'm probably going to keep a hold of this world then. Alright, where's my spawn area? There it is. Cool. Let's just whack a book stand down here and stick a linking book on. So if we die or anything, there's always one there. Job done. Sweet. And actually, I'm just going to put a, a mark there as well. Um, and Map Writer does not want to keep up with this for some reason. Uh, so let's just go for Home Book. And that will be in the group uh, Sanguine World. Sanguine. Oops. World. Cool. Ding, 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 ding. And I like to change these things to green so that I know where it is. Awesome. So now whenever in the, uh, this world, I can just uh, check on the world group and find my way home. Sweet. 
So yeah, so that's pretty cool. We can just come back and get all the stuff that we want of this. I'm pretty sure it's, yeah, it's a Tinker's Construct thing. So if I look at uses, we can use this in a uh, smeltery to make tools and things. Not sure if I'm really going to get into that, but all the same, nice to know it's here. Cool. Alright, let's have a look around. And over here I spy a library. And libraries are good. I like my libraries. Because this is one of the main ways that you can get more pages. Shut up, zombie. No one cares for you. And there's always a chest in here. They're usually hidden in, uh, just in these bottom corners. So, let's see. What do we get? We got overgrown beach biome. Cool. Highland center biome. No ore and oats. I've got a ton of them. That's pretty useful. I quite like that. Uh, order infused stone block. That's fun. Cool. Alrighty then. Uh, what else we got? No ore and oats again. What's this one? Eternal weather. Interesting. Okay. So you can have it like eternally rainy or something. That's cool. Uh, so these pages are pretty important if you want to go about making your own ages, which I do because I want to find somewhere cool and new to live and make my own place. So we're going to basically try and get as many as we can of them. Ooh, wow. We've got little red stars as well. Normal stars and red stars. That's cool. Red twinkling stars by the look of it. Yeah, they keep twinkling in and out. That's awesome. Uh, so I'm going to keep looking around, see if I can find any more libraries and find some more pages. Okay, and I'm back. Didn't find any more libraries, but hey-ho, whatever. Just chucks these uh, pages away in my filing cabinet. Cool. Uh, so libraries can just kind of spawn pretty much randomly in uh, any Mistcraft age. They just have a chance of just spawning, as they do, which is pretty nice. Seems it's a very good way to get pages. Um, but I'm not too bothered about looking around for more. Because I'm going to get another way to get pages, I think. So we can craft our amazing world of awesomeness that we're going to build our new home. Uh, but in the meantime, I think I'll just show you uh, another cool place that we found. This was uh, when I was recording it before. And we found this place. It was very cool. Here we are. So this is an example of a crazier age that you can find. It's pretty interesting. Um, you can see we've got some debuffs on us. So that means there's instability in this age. But it doesn't seem to be too bad. We haven't got any crazy decay going on, so that's fine. Uh, but yeah, we are in a cave age, which is pretty nice. Um, as far as I know, it uses the nether terrain generation. So it's basically just going to spawn stuff like the nether. But instead of netherrack, we've got endstone. And instead of uh, water, we've got... What was this? Was this manulin? I don't know. Some sort of crazy tinker's construct thing, which you know is will burn you if you jump in it. So don't jump in it. Yeah, this is just, I just thought I'd show you this. This is really cool. This is the kind of stuff that can come out of uh, Mistcraft when you let it do its thing and just create random ages. You can get some pretty crazy stuff. I like it. And we're back. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention, I also got a wolf. Because, why not? I found him in uh, this world. The, uh, what was this, what do we call this one? Arctic land. This is one big uh, Arctic tundra. What's a tundra biome? That was like a frozen forest type thing. It was quite cool. Just one giant biome with that though. Not anything too interesting. They found a dog there. So, yay, I tamed him. Hello. Anyway, we are going to get on to trying to find uh, some more pages. So I have a plan of how to do this, and I will get back to you once I have set up some stuff for it. Catch it a bit. Okay, so I think I've got everything set up, and as you can see, it's another mob grinder. Though this one is getting something different for us, we're not that interested in the drops. I've got it picking them all up anyway. But the thing we're really interested in is mob essence. And we're going to use that to spawn villagers to then get pages. So, the way I've got this set up is pretty simple. Just a load of uh, grinders. And I've got uh, power hooked into the top of the grinder. On the back I've got chests. These uh, logistical transporters didn't quite want to... Uh, hook up to the grinders, but the way I've daisy chained them should work. Yep, seems to. Cool, so these are all just uh, pulling out of the chest and then pushing to the next one. So it'll just daisy chain along and then get sucked up by the import bus. Awesome. And then I've got mechanical pipe, the uh, mechanism fluid pipe in the bottom of the grinders, which is going to suck out the mob essence that uh, these things are going to make when they kill mobs. Uh, going into this drum from extra utilities, uh, which stores 256 buckets of the stuff, so that should be good. And then I've got a fluid storage bus on here so that I can export the fluid into the spawner when I make that for the villagers. Cool. So, fingers crossed, this should all go well. Let's grab my cursed earth and fill this thing in. And all should be good. Alright. And let's hope I don't get murdered while I place this stuff down. That's always a plus. 
Yeah, like I said, let's hope I don't get murdered. Just die. What the hell? What is... Oh, I'm on Lux Capacitor mode. Let's just um, not use that. I wanted the uh, the railgun to be on. There we go. And uh, put some more of this stuff in. And we should be all set, hopefully. Yeah, looking good. And the grinders... The grinders aren't working. Oh, no, there they go. Okay. It took a little while. Oh, yeah, I can see the mob essence coming out already. Sweet. Tasty, tasty mob essence. Get all that stuff in there. And quickly grab the dark glass. Boom. Done. Oh, not quite. I missed a slot. Eh, break that open. Cursed Earth go in there. Awesome. Nice. So, yet another you know, mob grinder setup. I swear, I must make a mob grinder like every episode now. It's insane. But, it's cool. This will get us a ton of mob essence when we need it. Sweet. How much has this filled up yet? Ooh, it hasn't filled up yet. Uh, do I need to configure this thing? Quite possibly. Just uh, turn that on to push. Does that work? Hmm. That's interesting. I'm wondering if maybe it has to be piped into the top. It seems to be connecting though. That's odd. I'm not sure I understand. It said the drum is empty. Hmm. Curiouser and curiouser. Um. Okay, I'm gonna see if I can fix this. Ah, there we go. Now it seems happy. Just seems you have to pipe it into the top of it. That's cool. Let's move this uh, fluid storage bus over and job done. Fluid storage, fluid storage. Where'd you go? There you are. And you go onto there. Hopefully that should work. Much less point. Will it be able to draw out the side of it? I don't know actually. Hmm. I should probably test that out as well. Okay, now is it working? Yeah, looks like that's draining and is this filling up? And that's filling up. Awesome. Cool. Alrighty then. Now let's kill that export bus. I don't actually need all the mob essence in there. And just uh, transfer this stuff over with the buckets because that's easier. But sweet. We've now got mob essence coming in. That's cool. And. Alright, so what's next? And I can't. That's only a few drops, so I can't actually pick up anymore. Ah, whatever. It can just be there. Alright, so yeah, next I'm going to need to build a place where the uh, villagers can spawn. So I'm going to work on somewhere fun for that. And go to the time lapse. Okay, scratch that time lapse, just um... What? What is that? It's just... No! Just, ah, this is why I don't do replica stuff. It never comes out like you want to. And yeah, I've kind of run out of time on building this anyway. If I actually want to have this episode up at some sort of decent time. <laughs> I did use a couple of cool things while building this though, just as I was messing around with. I used this builder's wand, which is pretty fun. Uh, you have to make that with unstable ingots. So, you know, that fun thing that um, can explode. So, you know, that's fun. Uh, but it's pretty cool. It sort of lets you build out layers of things. If you have any of the block in your inventory, which I don't, um, I'll just go and grab something that I can build to show you. Uh, yeah, sure, just grab a bunch of dirt. Boop. And grab that out. So you sort of build out a um, layer, then it will sort of let you build in lines, uh, just in all in one big go, which is pretty cool. Or if you build up sort of a, a wall, then you can build out it out into a big cube, which is pretty cool. I quite like that, it's made things uh, quite a bit easier. Certainly saved me a lot of time on the walls, but, you know, it helps if you actually have some sort of design idea rather than build a big block and make it look vaguely like a sand crawler. <laughs> um, and I also used the uh, paintbrush after those uh, first blocks didn't work out. I thought I'd give the uh, the paintbrush and paint kind of go. You have to do that with this uh, paint mixer. You put a, a bucket of milk in here. You fill up these things with the relevant dyes, cyan, magenta, uh, yellow, and black. And, yeah, just kind of pick whatever colour you want. So then when you put a, a paint uh, bucket of milk in there and mix it up, it gives you a paint can. Which you then get a paintbrush, fill it up, and yeah, you can go nuts, you can paint things. Which is, you know, it's cool and all, but eh, it takes a very long time. <laughs> Especially when you just built the whole thing with the builder's one, but yeah. Alright, um, anyway, so moving on, let's just uh, go and make the spawner and ignore that abomination that I've made. <laughs> so, for the spawner... Bloop, uh, so we want the MFR spawner, I think, which is not in there, it's in there. Uh, I can't remember what it's called. I think it's the auto spawner. Uh, let's search. Oh, that's the one. 
I see it. There it is. Auto spawner from Mine Factory Reloaded. We should have all this stuff. Yeah, we do. Cool. Auto spawner done. And then I need to grab a safari net. This one here, which has a villager in it that I grabbed before. He didn't look very happy about being taken, but you know, it's um, well, it's not really his choice, is it? So we're gonna whack our auto spawner down in here. And I haven't really given myself a way back in here. How have I new just uh, break that and whack that down? Cool. Hopefully this should contain. They might spawn outside of this thing, which will be a bit annoying, but whatever. Uh, so I need a few things hooking into this. Uh, I'm going to need some cable hooking into it. I should be able to fit under here. And whack the spawner up there. And I should be able to pump fluid in the bottom. And I'm going to have to grab a bucket of essence to use that. So I'll grab one of them later. And now let's just wire this thing up and cable it back to the other stuff. Oh, hi there, zombie. You alright? Let's just uh, shoot you. There we go. Oh. I always forget about the knockback on this thing. I always go flying when I'm using it. Still, it's fun. Uh, yeah, I forgot I really should have put torches here. Eh, it'll be fine, probably. Uh, anyway, let's grab a bucket of the essence. Boop, that'll do. Wow, that is really backlogging up, which is not really a surprise, but it'll be fine. I could probably turn that thing off if I tried, but eh, be right. Oh, wait, oh, yeah, sure, on second thoughts, let's light the place up, because I'm seeing a lot of uh, dark areas, and I have, you know, free torches, so. Why not? Ah, that'll do. And let's head back out and chuck this uh, bucket of essence into the fluid export bus. Yeah, as you can see, I didn't actually finish that thing off. It's just got kind of an empty back. It's fine. Kind of. Um, right, there we go. Put the queue back in. And can I reach the export bus? Yes, I can. Cool. And that goes in there. Awesome, hopefully that should... Yep, that's filling up with mob essence. And uh, it's got power. And uh, we want to stick our reusable safari nets into there. Cool, jobs are good. And um, we don't want to spawn an exact copy because we don't want the exact same villager that uh, we've got in there. We want to spawn different ones so that we'll get different kinds. Like, there's a beekeeping one. He wants papaya wood planks. All right, then. So if you wanted a specific kind, which we do eventually... We're essentially just going to let these guys spawn until we find one that's giving away um, Mistcraft pages. And then we'll bag him up with the safari net. Oh god, they are spawning outside the thing. I was hoping they wouldn't. And then, yeah, we can grab the one. Oh god, there's... Oh god, so many villagers. Oh god, shut up! Uh, I have no idea who I've talked to and who I haven't. Great. Oh god, I'm getting out of here. The noise is unbearable. Yeah. Ugh. Uh, yeah, so we want to eventually find a uh, one of these guys who will be a Mistcraft villager, and then we can start spawning exact copies of him. And hopefully, if I remember rightly, they should still give us different items, even though it's spawning exact copies. Uh, but in the meantime, I kind of need to bury them in a little bit better. Alrighty then, that's uh, quite a lot of villagers. Alright, let's talk to some of these guys. Ooh, this all safari nets. That's cool. Uh, have any of you got Mistcraft pages? Well, actually, I might buy one of those safari nets off you, dude. Because it'll save me having to make another one. Let's just grab some uh, emeralds. Oops, from the order. Emeralds. Cool, I've got a bunch. I'll just get like 20 of them. That should be fine. Bunch of emeralds. Uh, which one? Ah, it was you. Yeah, here. Have three emeralds. There we go. Cool. And then hopefully we can look around until we find someone who's going to sell us pages. Oh my god, the amount of villagers. Just Can, can you stop? Can you not? I'm just going to take that out of there. I've just got to even spawn him back in until I know for sure where there is going to be another one. Alright then. Okay, I should really just start killing them. Ooh, still has knowledge fragments. That's kind of cool, but meh, die. Aha, here we go. This guy will give us Maple Woods uh, biome page. Let's grab him in the safari net. Awesome. Now we just need to murder all these guys. Ah, oh, this is the fun part. Hmm. Have some saw blades, you bastards. Yeah, excellent. All of your friends are dead. <laughs> Alrighty then, cool. And I can get rid of these uh, things around here that I don't really need. Cool, so we've finally got a, uh, a Mistcraft villager. 
And uh, now we sh I'm hoping if we um, enable an exact copy, hopefully they won't all give us the same page. That's my hope, anyway. So is there something or other biome that it was giving us? Come on, come on, spawner. Ah, oh, yeah, it's working up to it, I think. Yeah, there's one. He'll give us Maple Woods biome, he'll give us Maple Woods biome. Damn it! I was really hoping it wouldn't do that. Ah, oh, well. What can you do? Let's turn off, um... Always give us the same thing, then. Actually, unless... Hey, Hannah, just stop. 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 Stop, stop spawning villagers. Ah! No. Just die. All of you. Just die. Ah! Go to hell, villagers. Oh god, the noise. Actually, now that I think about it, if I give him an emerald, will he just give me the same page each time? Um, it appears so, yes. Damn it, that's annoying. I was hoping he would give us different shit. Oh well, kill the villagers. Oh, so it seems like there's just these purple guys. So that's actually really good to know. So we can basically just kill anyone that's not... Um, a purple dude. Let's use the railgun. That'll be a bit easier. There's my railgun. There it is. Death to you. Death. No. Death to you, sir. The mana beans are nice, but don't need them. Death to you. Death to you. Death to you. Anyone who isn't purple dies. It's like some form of really, really evil. I know. It's like mod-based segregation, essentially, isn't it? Christ, this is getting really morbid really quickly. Oh well. All right, we got a bunch of purple dudes. So let's see what kind of pages we can get. Maple Woods by him, don't care. Ooh, he'll give us a notebook. Is this going to be empty? If Wait, you want 20 diamonds for it? Hmm. So not diamonds, emeralds. Uh, you know what? That might be worth doing. Emeralds. Let's just get a whole bunch. All of my emeralds. I've got a ton of emerald essence, so it should be fine. But yeah, actually, it might be worth giving getting a notebook from him. Just to see what there is in it. What have we got? Oh, hello. We've got jungle wood block, uh, oasis biome, water infused stone, lead ore, signal forest, volcano, jungle, snow, stone block, molten karma, glowstone block. Ooh, that's cool. We could build a glowstone world. That'd be fun. Uh, resonant ender, ender starfield, skilt glades. Got fog color. That's an important one. All right then. Okay, cool. So we've got a couple of good things out of him that we will actually need. I'm also wondering, if I buy the same thing again, will it be all the same modifiers? I think I'm going to assume yes. I'm, assuming, I'm going to assume it's, it's all the same pages. It may well not be. You only saw me redstone. You're not the right kind of villager. That means you die. Anyway, uh, let's see what else we can find around here. Essentially what I'm looking for is not specific block types. I'm looking for... Uh, main modifiers, so things like sky color that you really need to be putting on to save yourself from getting bad instability. What the hell? A capsule station? I have no idea what that is, but you're also not a miscap builder, so you die. Uh, ooh, he's got notebooks for us as well. Uh, it's probably worth doing. Let's do that. So I'm assuming this, wait, was this just like 20 pages? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Okay, so it's a little bit less efficient than uh, getting all the pages individually, but eh, whatever. Uh, anything cool in here? Um, Moo Moo Farm Biome. Ooh, we'll definitely check that out. I've heard of that place and it's not a fun, happy times, but it can be fun. Uh, volcano Biome. Normal Sun. Ooh, Normal Sun's useful. Boundless Sky, I really want. Highlands Biome, Alps Biome, Lush Desert Biome, Tundra Biome, Cinnabar Ore Block, uh, Island World. Okay, that's some good stuff, some good stuff. A couple more things I know I need, though, so let's carry on. Uh, I think I'm just going to kill this round of them and start spawning some more. Ow. Well, this is taking a little while, but on the plus side, I'm getting pretty good at aiming with this um, railgun. I only hit one of the Mistcraft villagers in about, I don't know, 20 seconds. I'm quite impressed with... Never mind. Hello. First, I would like to buy a notebook. Then I would like to buy another notebook. Uh, no, uh, no. Gimme. Gimme. Give me the f give me the notebook. I won't let me buy one. How about now? Okay, how about if I close the thing and then ask you for another one? Aw, they won't give me one anymore. What a douche. 
Asshole. Can I give you a notebook back to no? Oh, well that sucks. Looks like I can't actually uh, buy it off him twice. Fair enough. I know I don't use village as much. <laughs> that should be obvious. Uh, what do we get? Hellbar, Capsidium, uh, Tiny Biome, Savannah, Nether Quartz all block. That's cool. Can make a Nether Quartz age and get Nether Quartz for days. South Russian, Polar Biome, White Colour, that's good. Forest Hills, Highland Center, Caves, Dark Green. Alright, well, cool. We've got a decent amount of pages, but not quite what I want to build my house with. Uh, so I think I'm going to carry on with uh, getting as many villages as I can, sticking all these pages into this and stuff. It should be fun. So these you can pretty much just put it in and pull out uh, as you want with the notebooks. And so I'll chuck them on here and organize them all. And hopefully I'll get enough pages to make my new home world. So yeah, I think that's going to do it for this one. So thank you very much for watching. As always, I'm Mistrudel, and I'll see you in the next one. You got anything to say? Didn't think so. Ah, pew, pew, pew. I've run out of power. That's depressing, man.